24 cycles. Hi. Go back 10 or 15 years and the only kind of tone control you'd get on a car stereo unit was bass and treble, perhaps even just a tone control. Nowadays, you've got parametric equalization. Now this is very powerful stuff. 10 years ago, if you wanted parametric EQ on a car stereo system, you'd have to buy a black box, plug it in and find somewhere to hide it. Now, the only problem with parametric EQ is it seems to confuse the hell out of a lot of people. I mean, ah, oh, several people, including my own sons, they never touch it. They select factory EQ and that's where it gets left. So I thought, okay, when I was doing the review of the CDE123 from Alpine, now that has parametric EQ, very typical of that kind of set built in, very powerful potentially. And I wonder how many people are using it. So I thought next video is going to be a tutorial on the basics of setting up parametric EQ. This is the Alpine CDE123R and as I say it's typical of a lot of sets these days in that it has built-in three-band parametric equalization. Three-band in the sense that it has bass, mid and treble, but within those bands it has a number of center points or center frequencies. On this one, if you hold down the audio button for a couple of seconds, hit that and it will go into three-band EQ. It will, normally it will come up into factory EQ, go to three-band EQ, press that and it'll give you bass, mid, treble. Now within each of those you have the same kind of settings. Let's just concentrate on mid. So now we're into the parametric EQ. Width is the width of the tonal curve that you're going to affect at the center frequency. The center frequency you pick here. Now I've got it set at the moment to 2.5K or 2500 hertz. I'm going to show you the effect that that has on an RTA in a moment. For the time being, let's come out of that. And the other setting um, is level. So once you set your width and your center frequency, you need to set the level that you want to increase or reduce at that frequency point. What the width does is it allows you to affect more of the frequencies around the center point or less of the frequencies around the center point by selecting a narrow or a wide width and I'm going to show you that using the RTA. So we have the parametric EQ set on the Alpine to give a 7 dB boost at and around 2.5k and also a 7 dB boost at and around 80 Hz in the base region both these are set with a narrow Q or width, so it gives quite a prominent peak in each case. And it has the effect, of course, of dropping the middle frequencies between the two points. This, of course, you can drop a lot more, because here, this is still set at 0 dB, so you can take these frequency points down here, at wherever point you choose, and drop it 7 dB. If we look at the, the width control, if I go back into... Uh, mid, width. At the moment this is a, a narrow setting on 2.5k and as we sh saw before if we quickly go to a wide setting look how it affects the frequencies around it. It's much broader not so much of a peak here now. Now if we go to the center frequency in fact to show it a little bit more clear I'll go back to, to, to a narrow Q and watch how this goes back up the peak increases back up again. Now if we go from there to the center frequency, at the moment it's 2.5k. Now if we drop it down to 1.5, look how that shifts. And it keep going, this is at 1k. And then within the midband we can go 500 hertz at the bottom end of the midband. And by then changing the width or Q to a na to a wide setting from the narrow setting, this is at this is centered at 500 Hertz, but look how it affects the whole of that mid-band area. Now we have three bands of bass, mid and treble on this Alpine set. With each band we can set one of four center frequency points. So it's not true 12 band parametric EQ in that you cannot set all four center points simultaneously. You choose one center point within each three of the three bands and then you modify at and around that center point. Nonetheless, it gives you a lot of power in terms of being able to equalize within the three bands. 
And what makes parametric equalization different from graphic equalizers is the fact that you can change the width of the frequencies that you're affecting. With a graphic equalizer it tends to be preset and you're just altering the level up and down at, at a particular frequency point that's also fixed. But here you can affect the width and that's what makes it parametric EQ. Okay, I've taken it back to show uh, a narrow Q at 2.5K. But what is 2.5K? How does it relate to the vocals, to the instrumentation? I think this is the big confusion and it's why people don't really know where to start with parametric equalization. I guess most guys would know that sub bass is around 20, 30, 40 hertz, and that's true. But what happens beyond that point? Well, you can do some research, certainly on the net, by looking at, at instruments and where their frequencies occur and, and learn how and where to start affecting how they sound. But broadly speaking, around 80 to 100, you're looking at bass guitar, um, bass uh, drum attack, um, the drum of the snare, that can add big attack there. But the mid-bass speakers have to be up to it, otherwise it can just end up as a distorted, flappy sound, of course. Similar applies up here. If you're looking around 200 hertz, it can add nice warmth to male vocals, for example. But the mid-range speakers have got to be doing their stuff to give you that. In this mid-band area, around 1K, it's where the ear is most sensitive. So a lot of the time, you're going to actually be reducing here rather than doing any increase. And it's always a good idea, rather than just keep boosting around, try and bring some frequencies down, otherwise you start losing headroom up at this, up at the peaks. Try and bring down, say, at 1K or thereabouts. That can sometimes give you some extra clarity, um, but also it increases the effect of the bass and the high end. Over here, when you get to around 2.5K, that's where you start to affect, for example, female vocals and start to give them a bit of extra presence and bring them out of the mix. Anything up from 2.5 to 6, 7K, you're going to give brightness to uh, vocals, to instruments of all kinds. As you start going up beyond 6, 7K, up to 10K, you're really getting into uh, symbols that you'll affect uh, the fundamental frequencies of symbols and then the harmonics of most instruments and vocals too. Beyond 10k it really is just a question of some of the harmonics and some of the detail that gives the richness but frankly there's not too much you're going to be doing up here. You're going to be affecting this area here, the mid-range around 1k between 500 hertz and say 2k and of course the bass area and mid bass area. A lot of attention here, quite a lot of, of car stereo systems lack in mid bass. They have a real problem because there's quite often a gap between mid range and sub bass and therefore you, you tend to having to play around here sometimes just to stop the mid range speakers from overextending. So it's not just about tonal control, you can use the parametric to get around some of the, some of the limitations you've got with your own system. Now I've shown you using an RTA what happens when you press the buttons on a parametric EQ but don't let that phase you. You don't need an RTA to set it up, you can use your ears. You may need to do a little bit of research on where the instruments are occurring in the frequency band, where vocals are occurring. But you can pick it up fairly easily and there's plenty of research you can do on the net to help you. This Alpine unit has three bands with four centre frequencies in each. So you can affect a centre frequency in each of the bands for the bass, they give you the choice at 60, 80, 100, and 120 hertz. In the uh, mid-range, it's at 500, 1K, 1.5K, and 2.5K. And up at the top end, it's at 7.5K, 10K, 12.5, and 15K. Now, there really wouldn't be much point in giving you control over anything above 15K, particularly when you consider you've got a broad width setting or Q setting. It ideally would have been nice perhaps to have had something between the 2.5 and the 7.5k mark. That said, 7.5k is well chosen and so is 2.5k. And again, you can use a wide setting on the queue to fill in between the two and actually get quite a nice presence lift, which works particularly well on, uh, on vocals. 
A few years ago, you'd have had to have spent more than the price of this unit to have added parametric EQ to your system. It's a powerful system that they build into the Alpine and a lot of other sets these days. Don't be scared to experiment. You can do a lot of good things to the sound of your system and help you to correct for some of the problems that you find in the in-car environment. Enjoy it and good luck with your setting up.